So far, we've um, eyeballed that time series, looking at time plots, or we've looked at ACF plots uh, to determine whether something is stationary or not. There are more formal and objective ways of doing this. So looking at non-seasonal non data, the two, two of the most popular ways of deciding whether a, a, a time series is stationary or not is the ADF test or the KPSS test. Now, a major difference between these two tests is the actual uh, null uh, assumed. So with the augmented Dickey-Fuller test, the null is assumed uh, that, the null assumes that our data is non-stationary. Now for econometric modeling or for inference, uh, this is the preferred test because we are interested in controlling for the probability of a type one error. So rejecting uh, H naught uh, while is true and we want to that alpha to be low. In forecasting, uh, we prefer the KPSS test because um, we don't want a difference unless we really have to, unless we find strong evidence of rejecting the null of stationarity. Hence, uh, in the Fable package and in the functions that follow, um, the default setting is to use the KPSS test. Now, as an example, let me remind you, we're using the um, the closing stock price for uh, the Google for Google for the for 2018. So remember, uh, we looked at that and we said this is non-stationary. We take a difference, and that now looks stationary and even white noise. Let's do that in a formal sense now by using the KPSS test. So we can use the features um, function. And from there, we can call the unit root KPSS test. Now, remember, um, here's the value of the KPSS test. And this is a p-value associated with that. Remember that the null is that our data is stationary. So this is strong evidence that we reject the null of being stationary. Hence, we need to perform uh, a difference. We need to take a difference. Um, the alternative way of doing that, if you don't want to look at the values of the test itself, is to call upon the unit root underscore n diffs, the number of diffs um, uh, function, and that will tell you, command, and that will tell you how many differences you need to take to make this data stationary. So in this case, uh, it says that we need to take one difference uh, to make the Google closing stock price stationary. Now let's revert our attention to seasonal data. And here is the HO2 time series that uh, we looked at previously. So remember we took a log uh, transformation to stabilize the variance. Then we took a seasonal difference and we looked at this, we said, oh, maybe it's not stationary. We need a first order difference to follow that. Well, let's do that in a more formal way now. So with um, similar to, uh, to non-seasonal data, uh, for seasonal unit roots, there are formal tests to actually um, test, but they don't work very well. So Rob and collaborators have uh, come up with uh, looking at, uh, at an alternative way of deciding whether we need a seasonal difference or not. So the alternative way is actually based on uh, features of time series and is based on the STL decomposition. So basically we do an STL decomposition and then we look at the ratio between the remainder and the seasonal component. Now, um, this is what they call uh, the seasonal strength FS. So this FS, oops, I should move myself from there. Sorry about that. So this FS uh, ranges between zero and one. If um, the ST, the, the seasonal component or the variance in the seasonal component um, is low, so compared to uh, R, then this ratio goes to one, hence this seasonal strength goes to zero. So we have low seasonal strength. If ST is strong, hence the variance of this um, goes to increases, hence this ratio will go to zero, then FS goes to one. Hence, we have a strong seasonal component. Now, after sort of many experiments and looking uh, at many uh, applications, it's found that um, if the seasonal strength uh, is greater than 0.64, then uh, we will take uh, one seasonal difference. And it's found that this works quite well. 
its application is quite simple. Uh, in the again in the features um, function, we're gonna call we're gonna use the features underscore STL. So this returns features from the STL decomposition. And the second entry that we see here is this uh, seasonal strength. So in this case, seasonal strength is 0.955. This is for the um, for the HO2 data, which is greater than 0.64. Hence, we need to take uh, a seasonal difference. Um, this can be automated if you don't want to look at the at the actual features themselves uh, or the the values of those features. You can actually call upon unit root underscore ns number of seasonal differences, and that will tell you how many differences you need to make. So it automatically compares the seasonal strength to 0.64, and it says you need to take make one take one difference, and this is for the log of the cost uh, of the data. Now, if we difference if we take the seasonal difference, then we want to do see how many um, more differences we need to take. And uh, that tells us we need one more difference in that data to make the data stationary, which um, agrees with our eyeballing process, let's say. <laughs> 